What if you build a CD transport with a power supply that wouldn't be a mismatch for an amp? Use the CD Pro 2 LF mechanism and build it in an extremely heavy cabinet. Then you get the Jace Audio CDT3 MK3. From here on I named the Jace Audio CDT3 MK3 the CDT3. There must be a serious high end culture in China, given the number of serious brands coming from there. Jay's Audio was new to me, and when I read about the construction of their CDT3 CD transport, I was rather intrigued. Being involved with file based audio for so long, I almost forgot there still are a lot of people that prefer a CD player. Now the CDT3 isn't a CD player, but only a CD transport meaning that it doesn't contain the digital to analog converter. It has several digital outputs that are to be connected to an external DAC. Let's see where it has its place in your stereo. It is to be connected to a DAC over either ASEBU, SPDIF, TOSLINK or I2S. That DAC then is connected to your amplifier over a pair of RCA or XLR cables, depending on your gear. The amp then drives the loudspeakers. The CD player can be controlled from the front on the player or using the infrared remote control. The CDT3 has a full aluminium housing that measures 450 by 380 by 150 mm and weighs 22 kilos. So it is about 17 to 20 mm wider than is usual with full width equipment. And it is extremely heavy. Later on we will see what causes the weight. The front holds the power button, an LED that indicates the power status, the pause button, the play button, the stop button and the previous and next skip buttons. The 3.12 inch OLED display shows the track and time information plus functions like repeat and random that can be activated from the remote control. On the rear we see the main switch that needs not be operated unless the player is not in use for a longer time since there is a power button on the front that puts the player in standby. Next to it the Schurter IEC mains inlet. Then the digital outputs starting with AES EBU on XLR, SPDIF on BNC, SPDIF on RCA and two I2S outputs, one on RJ45 that uses transistor to transistor logic, a single ended connection and one on HDMI that uses the low voltage differential signal system that is less susceptible to common mode noise. The HDMI labeling here might mislead people thinking that it can be connected directly to the HDMI input of an AV receiver, but that is not the case. You need to connect this to a DAC that has an I2S input on HDMI connector. The HDMI cable was chosen for its wide bandwidth. And even if your DAC has the same I2S input on HDMI, it still might not work since there are several pinouts versions on the market. Jace Audio adheres to the PS Audio pinout, a wise choice since it is the pinout scheme I see the most. To the left we see the reference clock output and input for interfacing with other digital equipment and or external clock. Let's go back to the small toggle switch I skipped. It engages four times over sampling. When the top is removed, the first thing we see is the renowned CD Pro 2 LF transport. This is a very expensive mechanism, even second hand they cost several hundreds of dollars. Then we see a board that contains a discrete linear power supply probably to power the CD mechanism. And there is a second one that powers the digital output board. On that board the 4 times up sampler. The AES3 inputs are all transformer decoupled. Note the mundo of capacitors here. The digital board is connected to the clock over a high quality HF connection. The board itself holds the oven controlled crystal oscillator and is powered by a third discrete linear power supply. 
This all is mounted on a machined aluminium base plate with the circuit boards recessed to avoid crosstalk. Front, sides and back are mounted so that this base plate is halfway resting on three pillars. If you think that's impressive, wait for when I turn over the player, for when the bottom is removed we see five Talama encapsulated transformers with 105 VA combined output, a field of diodes, an array of voltage regulators and a half a circuit board full of capacitors. I know a lot of amps that contain less power supply components. One last remark, the three pillars that support the central mounting plate stick through holes in the bottom plate and are terminated with shock absorbing feet. My mother would have said, that's the way to make even bricks taste great. I don't know if it works in English, but I think you get the picture. The CDT3 is a top loading player. The CD is loaded by sliding the transport lid backwards, taking out the disc clamp, placing the CD label up on the spindle, replacing the disc clamp and closing the lid. Then the play button on the front can be pressed to start playing. If you want more options you use the remote control. This again is a fine piece of work, machined from a solid block of aluminium it weighs almost 300 grams and lets you select track numbers, repeat, random play, scan, set volume and more. The CDT3 is a CD player that accepts Redbook CDs, the ones you know, CD recordables and CD write reads, the latter two need to be recorded and finalized on a CD recorder. HDCD, SACD and DSD are not supported. Of course I did the listening test in my setup 1, where the Air Acoustics AX520 amplifier drives the PMC FAC12 signature loudspeakers on isoacoustic Gaia 2 isolators. They are connected to the amp over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. The Cord Dave deck was connected to the amp over Grim Audio SQM XLR cables. The CDT3 was connected to the Dave over Siltec ADS EBU cable. All is placed in the Createc Trend 3 rack. The CDT3 has the relaxed sound you might expect in this class. It has a very fine and deep bass with good texture. The highs are also of fine quality while there is a good deep stereo image with reasonable good focus. It is the lower mids that offer a bit less resolution for its class. When the upsampling is engaged this improves to a certain degree. Overall it's a good sounding player that I rank halfway between my setup 1B and 1A. The Dutch MSRP is 5595 euros including 21% VAT. The price in US dollars is 4998 but that is excluding sales tax. Looking at the build quality that price is fully acceptable. What a nice machine this is. Although some think that CD players always sound better than network players, getting good sound quality out of a CD player is rather complex. As the inventor of the CD encoding scheme, Case Imming once told me, the CD player works thanks to the imperfection of the system. He meant the optical storage. The rock solid build quality of the CDT3 might be a good thing but for instance the Grim Audio player isn't built like this and still outplays the CDT3 and rightly so since it's about twice the price. It shows that hi-fi and ratio are not always bad fellows. And on that bombshell I'll end this video. I'll be back next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially, especially in these times. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the hbproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.